Now then, in this short video, we're going to take a closer look now at two insulated mats that I've been looking at for going under, to be used under the Greenlandic sleeping bags. Recently, we had a client contact us and, uh, who was buying a Greenlandic and he asked us the question, does he need to buy a wide insulated mat? And I hadn't ever really considered that point. What is the best sort of combination to go with the Greenlandics? The Greenlandics, of course, are widened or relaxed shaped mummy bags they're semi rectangular bags and by that I mean that the from, from the waist down really the the bottom of the bag is slightly wider than is normal with a close-fitting mummy it's more relaxed and it's got a wide foot piece you can see how wide that that the base of that foot piece is there and that's been designed for people that are side sleepers, people that are wrigglers in their sleeping bag, or they just want more comfort than they would normally get from being constrained in a close-fitting mummy bag. But equally, the, Green, the Greenlandics have been designed specifically with that sort of comfort in mind. But on top of that, they've been, we've used the materials that we use for ultra lightweight uh, mummy shaped bags. So we've used 7X fabric, very light 7 denier fabrics. We've used 950 fill power European goose down, pure, 100% pure goose down. So very, very lightweight materials. And the, it's the, so we've, we've looked at it and said, even if you do want extra comfort, if you want more comfort in a green in a sleeping bag than you're going to get from a mummy, you still are going to be interested in trying to go as light as possible. So comfortable but light as well. That's where the green landics were designed. So that question was put to us: Do we need? Do do I need to buy a wide insulated mat to go under it? And I'd never looked at that. So I'll just put that bag down. So what I've done is I've got hold of a couple of wide mats, insulated mats to go under the sleeping bag and given them a test. They're both, these, I've got two mats here, they're both from Xbed. The first one is the Flexi Mat Plus from Xbed. It's a closed cell foam mat and it looks very much like the early mats that we've seen from Thermarest and so on. These closed cell foam mats that, that fold very easily, but it's extra wide. It is, ex it, sorry, it's wide and in this case it's long as well. I thought I'd have a look at them. Now just to compare the width, there is my mat that I've used for years, my closed cell mat that I've used a lot for lightweight backpacking. It's a Thermarest, a Thermarest Z light and you can just see the difference in the width. In terms of pack down size it's about the same but one thing that's very interesting is this huge, these huge bumps that we've got in, in, in the mat. They're really pronounced, it looks like an egg box. It's really large and at first when I got it I thought and I, at first I thought that is going to be torturous to lie in with a sleep in a, with a sleeping bag. Um, but I gave it a go. I used a I was using my Greenlandic 200 which is rated at uh, plus five so it's a, a, a three season it's a summer it's a summer late spring summer and early autumn bag um, and I used it in the late summer but it wasn't cold I'm, I'm not going to cons I'm not going to comment anything on about the insulation it's rated it's got an R rating of two it's a, it's a summer uh, piece of equipment really um, and it's and it's relatively light actually, but it is massive to pack down when you strap that to your rucksack. You, it's, it looks very big, but I got on very well with it actually. Um, these these large bumps at first really worried me, and I thought, am I going to be really uncomfortable on that? But in fact, what I found, I'll turn it over and see if I can see it. Yeah. What I found was actually these cells flattened a little bit in the night. You, you might be able to sit, pick it up on the camera. They, 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 the bumps came down a little bit where I was lying on it, and they've stayed down. Looking at it now, it's a, it's a, it's a month since I used it, and um, they've stayed that shape. So, that, so, so they actually compress a little bit. In terms of comfort, I found it really good. I found it really comfortable. I was quite surprised. I was expecting a rough night. Um, which is often the case when I test sleeping bags. I often test sleeping bags to their extremes and into the place where I, I get, can get cold because that's the point of a test. So I'm not, I'm, I'm very familiar with the concept of testing sleeping bags and having a really bad time. But I slept really well with it. The Greenlandic bag was superb, very, very comfortable. And the, this mat was much more comfortable than I anticipated. So, 
in terms of the client's question, our customer's question, do we need a wide, a wide mat, an insulated mat that's wider underneath you? I've got two points to make. The first is, the first point that I would like to make is, there's no question that a rectangular shape, a proper full rectangular shape ground mat is, 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 is what you need with the Greenlandic. If you're going to get the benefit of extra wriggle room and width in the bottom half of the bag, then you need a rectangular shape ground mat. Now, it, does it have to be a wide one? Well, this is my regular shaped rectangular closed cell foam mat and you can see how much wide it is. I reckon you'd get on okay with that actually, but in terms of comfort, if you want extra comfort, and you know, people, when you're looking at the Greenlandic, you've got this, you're looking at the potential for lightweight equipment, but also more comfortable. So comfort is a factor. So the wider, the wider um, width, of this one is it certainly elevates the comfort and and what I would say is it allows you to get the maximum comfort you can from the Greenlandic bags so definitely I found the long this is a long and wide and I found I'm six foot but it, it's plenty long enough for me and I found that extra length in the thing very comfortable as well I found I got a little bit more comfort because I really was on the mat you know sometimes you, you we've all used half mats haven't we cut them down if we're in a race like the arm or something like that really looking to get that um, maximum weight saving but that's a one night that's a one night camp and you can get away with it what one bad night camping isn't too bad but if you're on a if you're doing a long distance trek for instance and comfort really matters then several days or weeks or even months if you're really long term then comfort is elevated and more important so the wide is definitely beneficial if you're going with the Greenlandics for comfort I also took out a it, uh, I, I'll, I'll put this one up as well for you to see. I also thought I'd try a, an inflatable mat as well. And again, it's from Exped. And this one is the Ultra 3R long and wide from Exped. Um, it's got an R value of approximately three. I think it's 2.9, close to three, isn't it? Now this, this again, first of all, I would say because it's a rectangular bag, it works really well with a Greenlandic. Now, I use this at the end of summer, so fairly warm conditions, and uh, I certainly felt the insulation of this. I was quite surprised. This one's got insulation. It's got a 60 gram uh, synthetic wadding, this up both on the top and the base, and I could definitely feel the benefit of that insulation. I was aware of it straight away. So that's it, very good. It is, of course, very, very comfortable. It pumps up pretty wide and it's probably a bit too, it's got too much air in it right now. I'd let it down a little bit. It's also got these elevated panels on the sides. They're a bit bigger and a bit higher. They basically keep you on the mat. They, they encourage you to stay on the mat, even in your semi deep sleep. They definitely help keep you on there. The rectangular shape is no question an advantage. I enjoyed the length and the width adds comfort. So again, this piece of equipment was really interesting to me. Now, the, the advantage of it is it packs down, that's its stuff sack, and so it packs down into a very manageable shape and the comfort is, is much higher. If you're a side sleeper and you're going and you're lying on your hips or your side, um, having quite a bit of depth of insula uh, quite a bit of depth in an inflatable mat, you really do enjoy you can really enjoy that comfort. And I was very pleasantly surprised. Sometimes with inflatable mats I found them really cold. Some of them I think they're no more than a lightweight lilo really. No insulation in them at all and cold air convection currents inside them underneath your body they really cool you down I find them very cold but this one I was really impressed with and there's certainly a degree of insulation that you can feel and I was impressed so going back to let's just go back to the start point the question we had from our client who was buying a Greenlandic sleeping bag the question was do you need to buy an insulated mat that is wider to go with these well the answers in two parts first of all I highly recommend a rectangular shape mat that would definitely work well with the shape of these bags and secondly you definitely get more comfort from a slightly wider mat so the wider mat is going to is going to also contribute to the comfort that you that you're looking at from the Greenlandic so there we are two mats they were both impressed me from Exped um, the flexi mat plus 
and the Ultra 3R. Both of them rectangular shape and they both impressed me. I was really impressed with those. All right, cheers.